Every year, coffee professionals from over 50 countries come together to show off their very best work. If ever there were an Olympics of coffee, the World Barista Championship would be the most exciting event. Now in its 15th year, the WBC has grown into an event that both celebrates and challenges baristas from all over as they compete for prestige and the unofficial title of Specialty Coffee Ambassador. I mean, this format we have now was created in Norway in 98. Um, that was the first competition. And the first world championship was in 2000. And uh, I know that the founders created it because in our culture in Norway, uh, and also in the US, except you had Starbucks already, uh, the coffee shop culture was totally new. It started in 96 in Norway, and then 98 we have this competition. And we really wanted to mm, make a craft out of being a barista like we wanted the barista to gain respect and to make people understand that uh, the person making the coffee is crucial to the cup quality so the competition is obviously uh, a selection process for crowning a, a superhero that will be changed every year and that superhero is the world barista champion and uh, i think the role of that person is not just uh, you know you it's not just to be able to prepare good coffee. Of course you have to be able to prepare good coffee, a good espresso, cappuccino, and whatever signature drink you prefer to prepare. But also, uh, it needs to be a good ambassador for coffee because that person is gonna travel around the world, teach new cultures and new baristas about coffee. Uh, a barista has to be able to communicate uh, and innovate for the industry and teach it to all those people. I think ultimately it's still a great way to find an ambassador. And I think the word ambassador was a very strong word around the time I won, that that was what the specialty community was looking for. And in many ways, it kind of speaks to how people misunderstand the competition. Um, because back then it was written into the rules that you know that the point of the competition was to look for an ambassador. The, the point of the competition was to find somebody who could perform technically and could be engaging or whatever else. And people were like, the competition doesn't replicate cafes, or only like, no, 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 it's a game based on making coffee designed to find an ambassador for a year. Like, that's the point of this. And like, it doesn't engage the public. And you're like, no, 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 that's not. The, the point of the competition is not to be engaging to the general public. If it were, you'd be able to tell what's happening by watching. The competition format is deceptively simple. Each competitor has just 15 minutes to deliver a presentation alongside the service of 12 drinks, four espressos, four cappuccinos, and four of signature beverage of their own creation. This is a relatively normal task for a barista, except that now every move they make is judged and scored by a panel of judges. Points are allocated for beverage taste and quality, for cleanliness, the consistency of their preparation, even for waste of milk and coffee. At the end of the weekend, the barista who has earned the most points during their routine will find themselves crowned as the new champion. Uh, competition absolutely has merit when you're behind the bar. Um, the direct relationship is a little bit difficult to parse. Uh, obviously, competition service bears almost no resemblance to cafe service, and it's very easy to look at it and say, oh, well, here's a skill set that I'm developing that's very specific to serving four judges three courses of drinks in 15 minutes and talking about it. Um, but the other end of that is the confidence and the really deep and nuanced understanding of the processes that underlie all of the drinks that you serve. Uh, all translate very clearly to cafe service. There are so many things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that you might do right, but it, you only have 15 minutes on a stage, and all you need is one or two things to go wrong. And really, in a sense, I think it's, it's a microcosm of espresso, in that, you know, espresso, if one thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. And so we're always trying to minimize the things that go wrong with espresso. And it's a pressure-packed environment, just like what's in that portafilter basket on the stage at the WBC. And it's intimidating. Time. 
To compete in the world arena, a barista must not only craft and practice their routine, they must first win a national championship at their home country. These national events follow the same format as the world championship and are often more community focused, allowing less experienced baristas to take part and compete. But the WBC doors are not open to all, and each new country must first become an officially sanctioned host nation. Um, this year, one of the most exciting countries to be coming is Iran. Um, they had it, it's this enterprising group of baristas who started their own guild in Tehran, and they, you know, got enough momentum going to have their first national championship and have a competitor who actually just got his visa approved like days ago here to compete. So to become a sanctioned body for the WBC is it's quite a long process. Um, it's not something you can necessarily just do. You have to have supporting evidence that you are an organization that has already put on certain events. So um, if you've never done a barista competition in your country or even really like a latte art competition or you've never done any sort of community events, you wouldn't actually be able to host a, a, a national barista competition. So for the Iranian baristas that I was working with, the first time I met them was two years ago. They had never done anything other than maybe like show up at each other's coffee shops and make coffee together. but. They wanted to become a part of the, the, the world coffee community and so I expressed to them that they needed to start building a community, um, reaching out to other coffee shops and reaching out to other baristas and start to form their own little group and their own community. So they formed the Iranian Barista Guild. They hosted their first barista jam kind of thing and I think like seven people showed up and but it was it was really big for them at the time. What these countries bring to the stage is an awareness for everyone in the audience and the tens of thousands of people who are watching the live feed at home that coffee is so much bigger than what it is in just your shop or just your town. And when you're working as a day-to-day -day barista, it's pretty important and awesome to find out that your work is that big of a deal and that important. And that can inspire you long enough to make a career out of this. The industry outside of competition frequently moves faster than than the competition but then at, at in the same sentence I will say that some of the biggest in, innovative moments in our industry have come directly uh, out of the competition people understand increasingly and I think we forget that people don't that coffee can be made well or badly that there is a skill to making coffee well. And there is also a quality inherent in the product itself. And you know, we have a ubiquitous commoditized product in our culture. Coffee is coffee, it's bitter, it's sometimes more bitter than others. People, most consumers wouldn't understand why though. They wouldn't be like, oh, this is bitter because they don't clean their equipment. They wouldn't be like, oh, this is bitter because they're using a dark roast or, you know? Whereas with a steak, they're like, oh, they burnt the steak. I mean, I understand preparation. Or they're like, oh, this is just a cheap cut. This doesn't. This is not good tasting meat. We understand that. We understand that that is not a commoditized thing. But with coffee, we're still uh, spreading that message. And I think the competition has helped with that. That, you know, even if it is for that weird one minute of awkward conversation on the breakfast news show on ABC or whoever else, you know, like there is still that moment where we're like, hey, here's someone really good at something and it happens to be coffee and you can be good at that. And that little message I think is still very valuable. Definitely the, the competition has influenced the whole world. A very good example is, I think it was two or three years ago, the championship in Melbourne, uh, Matt Perger used uh, what we, cons everyone, the whole industry considered an old designed bag grinder for shops and he used it for his espresso and he came second I mean he was very close to winning that year uh, but it you know before that performance I had never seen that grinder anywhere and if you go to any coffee shop around the world now they all have that grinder and that's one or two years ago he did it you know so I think that's uh, how influential it can be and you know the manufacturer of this grinder is not even able to deliver it fast enough because they don't actually manufacture the bursts that are making this the exceptional grinder that it is. And they were about to face it out because they want to make their own bursts. That's what they specialize in. But uh, 
now they're not able to phase it out at all because the demand is so high. So that's sort of one of the most extreme things that I've seen in, in my career in, in terms of how a barista can influence a whole industry. Being a WBC champion has been a career-making distinction. It still is considered like the ultimate title that you can win. Anyone who was there at those, in those early ones would tell you that it's just a whole different beast now. Winning the competition gives you a key to a lot of doors, but it's up to you which one you open. I think you can sort of surf that wave if you want to. That has never been a goal for me, but uh, for me it's been a goal to, to have an influence on the industry and, and try to change it towards a positive direction. I had a number of people come up from New Zealand and Italy and just all over the world and say this is what the competitions are about. Yes, this is we're here to crown a champion, but in the end, we're here to introduce more people in the world to what specialty coffee is. And this person coming from a country that is very new to specialty coffee, here to represent their country and, and bring pride to their country for coffee, that's, that's why we do the competitions. It's really an amazing thing to watch. They're bringing every single part of themselves to stage and also taking the role of ambassador to their own country very, very seriously. So when they're competing on a national level, they're competing for Joe's Roasting Company. But here they're competing for all of Greece, or all of Ethiopia. And that's a really amazing thing to see. It's the only way on this level to get people to be really honest with you about the work that you're doing and give you real feedback on the work that you're doing and really push and stretch and expand your skill set. There's no other challenge like it, there's no other endeavor like it, and it's essential and it's intoxicating. Honestly, my favorite aspect of the competition is seeing everybody come together in support of their own country. Um, I come back to the WBC as the Olympics of coffee, but it really is, and so we're all rooting for Pavinsky this year, and it's fun to all come together and like want him to do well, um, but then when he's done, you're still rooting on all the other competitors, and I love the, the spirit behind excelling and making great drinks and pushing coffee and our creative approach and our aspect and excellence for them. In a short 15-year life, the WBC has changed to suit the times and better adjust to new competitors and fresh ideas. As the coffee industry evolves, so too will the standards and approaches to brewing coffee, and the WBC of the future is not likely to look the same as it does today. Now it's, it's a mayhem because, you know, internet is more developed now than it was before. Uh, social media, you know. So now you see all kinds of baristas that get inspired and it's not necessarily even the champion who is that role model anymore. Other baristas are also role models. So it's definitely massively influencing the industry. And I was just at the new Starbucks reserve store that is very much inspired by the independent store that are very much inspired by the competition. So, you know, now one of the big players are really watching this. They're even very present here at the, the fair this year. Uh, and I think that's great, you know, if we can change the big players, they are the ones who are promoting what we're doing in a much more efficient way than we are doing, because we're small independent stores, and, but they're reaching out to, you know, so many more customers than we are, and uh, that's a great thing, I think. That's a good, it's a good thing that we can promote coffee in a better way every day.